What is EPM? Uh, well, the initials refer to equine protozole myeloencephalitis. And what that means is that equine, it affects horses. Uh, protozole, it's caused by a protozole organism called Sarcocystis neurona. And myeloencephalitis means that organism infects nervous tissue of either the brain or the spinal cord. Uh, for horse owners, it's a, it's a, a diagnosis that means their horse's, horse is going to be totally out of commission for the most part until the disease is brought under control. In all but mildly affected cases, that's going to be the situation. Uh, how do they get it? Well, it, it is called, caused by a protozoa and it has a real geographic distribution. Because opossums are involved in the life cycle of the protozoan, you see it in parts of the country where, there are, uh, where opossums live. In parts of the country where there are no opossums, you almost see no EPM. In Texas, where I live, we see a lot of EPM because we do have a lot of opossums here. And horses get it by ingesting, either at pasture or in their feed, possum feces containing that protozoan. Uh, they ingest it, it migrates out of their stomach and intestine, and part of its, uh, the pathway of its migration is through those nervous tissues, and that's where you see the signs. What does it look like? Well, it, it had, there's a wide range of clinical signs, uh, from horses being just mildly affected to horses that are quite severely affected. Anymore, people are tuned into their horses that much, particularly if they're horses they compete on, that they're going to recognize a lot of the subtle signs very early. What the protozoan does in the nervous tissue is it disrupts nerve transmission, and the major effect on the horse's body from the nervous tracts that are affected in the spinal cord is they tend to lose uh, proprioceptive capabilities, and that means their perception of where their limbs are in space gets altered. It also affects uh, parts of the nervous system where they develop a degree of weakness. Well, how would, you, how would you notice that? Well, for a horse that's doing an athletic event that has to have a lot of coordination, they start to set, lose subtle uh, aspects of their coordination. In a cutting horse that is uh, going to run hard, stop, and has to turn quickly, the part that they uh, start to struggle with is the turning. They can do the stuff that goes at speed in a straight line pretty well, but with the more subtle movements required to turn, uh, they start to struggle with those. And just depending on the event you do, it's going to affect horses where those more fine motor activities are involved. How else can you recognize it? Uh, well, a common provocative test that's done is to pull and release on a horse's tail. You're checking for muscle weakness. Most horses will resist, resist that totally, and you cannot pull them off center. In an EPM-affected horse to varying degrees, you can pull them completely off center and you can do it repeatedly. So if you see a horse like that that's struggling with some of its finer motor activity, is weak to a tail pull, EPM, at least in this part of the country, should be very, very high on your list. Uh, what veterinarians will often do in trying to make a determination is do further provocative limb placement tests. Horses posturally like to stand like all their legs are the legs of a coffee table. They, uh, to resist gravity, they want to stand in a square position. Well, when you lose proprioception, you lose some of that, that process. And so you can physically move a horse's limb to an awkward position, and an EPM-affected horse will often leave it there, even though naturally it would want to pull it back immediately. It doesn't recognize it as being abnormal. So there's a wide variety of things you can look for and start to see in an EPM affected horse. Can you diagnose it to 100%? There is a serum assay that you can use that does provide some information. It's not 100% accurate. I recommend people if they, uh, if it's something they, uh, they, like, they would like to find out more completely what a, their titer is in this particular case, they can do it. But if you have a horse that, that is exhibiting strong evidence of the other signs that we've talked about in this part of the world, or in parts of the world where there are opossums, um, the, the diagnosis is, is almost certain that you're dealing with EPM. What can you do about it? Well, there are a variety of drugs that are available that directly treat the protozoan. And you really need to visit with your veterinarian, uh, even though the drugs are the same no matter where you may live, in certain regional locales, uh, veterinarians have had better luck with one 
over another. So part of the medication process is usually to treat, to try and kill the protozoan. And then other parts of the therapy include things like vitamin E, which is an antioxidant that is good at helping promote healing of neural tissue in an attempt to heal the damage that's been done. A lot of people will include vitamin E in the therapy. Some people will add levamisole, um, which is thought to be an immune modulating drug that can be used in horses uh, to try and hopefully stimulate their immune system and maybe uh, help quell some of that reaction that's taking place in the nervous tissues. Uh, even after the protozoan has been hopefully, hopefully eliminated.